Hello bookish friends, welcome to my another top 5 books of 2022 video. In this video I will uh, talk about my uh, most uh, pleasantly surprising books that I've read in uh, 2022. These are not my favorite books uh, that I have read. I will make another video about uh, those books. Uh, but these books are the books uh, that I uh, was expecting actually much much less. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised uh, when uh, I liked them as much as I did. I ranked them in order of my uh, element of uh, being pleasantly surprised. Uh, so uh, let's see which books uh, surprised me the most in 2022. And I finished uh, Six Against the Art by the Detection Club. Uh, this book uh, was the book that I chose for a Golden Age author and uh, it included uh, short stories from six uh, Golden Age uh, authors who are the members of the Detection Club. And the book had a very interesting premise. Six of the authors in the Detection Club uh, wrote short stories including their version of A Perfect Murder. And uh, after each short story, a retired uh, inspector uh, from Scotland Yard uh, evaluated uh, if the short stories did, in did indeed include perfect murders or not. So this uh, book was a very uh, interesting reading experience for me. And the book included uh, short stories by uh, Marguerite Ellingham, uh, Father Robert Knox, uh, Anthony Barclay, Russell Thorndike, Dorothy L. Sayers, and Freeman Wills Crofts. And I rated each short story individually uh, as I finished them. Overall, uh, I really did like the general idea of the book very, very much. And, uh, and I was very curious to find out what the retired inspector would say about those murders. I thought uh, some of them were very close to perfect murders, whereas uh, I had doubts about some others, uh, but I didn't rate the short stories considering if they co had uh, perfect murders or not. The main uh, concern uh, was the writing style and uh, my enjoyment level uh, when I rate these short stories. In this collection, I rated the first short story, It Didn't Work Out by Marguerite Ellingham, 7 out of 10. The second short story, The Fallen Eye by R Father Robert Knox, 8 out of 10. The Policeman Only Taps Once by Anthony Berkeley, 9 out of 10. A Strange Death of Major Scallion by Russell Thorndike, 8 out of 10. A Blood Sacrifice by Dorothy L. Sayers, 9 out of 10. The Parcel by Freeman Wills Crofts, 8 out of 10. And my average rating amounted to 8.1, which of course translated as 8 out of 10 uh, for the whole book. As you can guess uh, from uh, my ratings, uh, I enjoyed each short story. Uh, I gave a 7 out of 10 to my least favorite. I can clearly see that the members of the detection club took their jobs very, very seriously uh, because they were all impressive uh, works of short fiction. So in summary, I can say that even though I knew that uh, I would like this book, I did not know that uh, this book would be such a huge success and I'm very glad uh, that I discovered the Detection Club through this readathon. The second book that I finished uh, was the uh, second book uh, that I read uh, for my books of Alfred Hitchcock project, The Ledger by Mary Belloc Lowndance. This book was adapted uh, into an Alfred Hitchcock silent movie. Uh, with the same name, The Ledger. Uh, this book is very heavily inspired by Jack the Ripper murders and uh, it tells the uh, story of a uh, murderer uh, whose method is very much like Jack the Ripper actually. Uh, but uh, in this book he is called The Avenger. The story is mainly uh, told from the point of view of a landlady who suspects uh, that their ledger uh, is the uh, serial killer mentioned in the newspapers. First of all, uh, I found uh, this book uh, to be very, very uh, modern. I found the writing style to be very easy to understand, uh, considering uh, it was written in uh, 1913. It could have been shorter, uh, but uh, I really did like uh, the uh, slowly growing uh, suspense of the book. 
and uh, towards the end uh, I felt very much worried for our characters so this shows uh, that it was a uh, good thriller for me because it was written uh, in the beginning of the century, uh, I felt like that I was reading a historical mystery, although it was written uh, as a contemporary work. Being a fan of uh, historical mysteries and historical fiction in general, uh, I, I very much enjoyed uh, reading and the way that uh, the city of London uh, was uh, portrayed in the book. I have not uh, watched the silent movie yet because I have just finished the book, uh, but uh, I will do a separate video of uh, in which I compare uh, the three books uh, belonging to this project uh, with their adaptations. Uh, but I saw the potential of a very uh, good uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie in this book while reading it. Uh, so to sum it up, I was very pleasantly surprised by this book, like it was the case in the book that I read uh, in January. Uh, for this project, uh, The Pleasure Garden. Uh, I gave uh, The Lodger uh, an 8 out of 10. The book uh, that I finished today uh, was another middle grade book. Uh, a Bear Called Paddington by Michael Bond. Uh, I read this uh, for the prompt of a book with an orphan main character. Uh, Paddington is an orphan and uh, he is raised by uh, his aunt in Peru. He comes to England uh, to see uh, the places that he read in books and he, his aunt uh, gets old decides to live uh, in the home of retired bears. Paddington is found uh, in the uh, train station Paddington uh, and that's where his name comes from. And, and the family uh, who found him, uh, the Browns, are very uh, do adapt uh, this uh, bear. And Paddington, uh, as a very naive uh, bear, goes through many adventures. I listened to this as an audiobook, and the audiobook was narrated by uh, Stephen Fry. I strongly advise you to uh, listen to the audiobook if you can. Because the narration is wonderful, uh, it captures uh, the subtle wit of uh, the book very, very well. Uh, I really did enjoy uh, the character of Paddington. He has a very unique uh, personality. He's sometimes very naive, like a small child, and he's sometimes very uh, clever, actually. But accidents uh, do find him. Uh, as well as his being a bit uh, careless about everything else. This book had a cuteness overload <laughs> for me. I smiled uh, a lot uh, while I was listening to the book and this book uh, could be uh, the cutest uh, and the coziest book that I have read uh, for a very long time. I loved uh, the fact that uh, Paddington's adventures uh, do consist of uh, daily activities how they like could be interesting for uh, us readers. Uh, I gave this book an 8 out of 10 and I will certainly continue to read uh, more adventures of uh, this uh, cute and lovable bear Paddington. And uh, I finished uh, a Turkish non-fiction audiobook that I was listening in my uh, application. Hikaye Anlatıcısının Yolculuğu by Nuri Sevsan Gürüvardar. Uh, the title can be translated as uh, The Journey of the Storyteller. The concept of uh, storytelling uh, in every part of the life, including books, uh, written media, uh, marketing, entertainment business, uh, and many, many more, are analyzed in detail. And the book uh, includes examples uh, from uh, worldwide uh, as well as uh, very specific uh, examples uh, belonging to Turkey. Uh, the book also uh, contains uh, some exercises for readers uh, who want to be authors. I originally uh, thought uh, this book was a fiction book including short stories and uh, I was very very wrong about it. But I think this was the most pleasantly surprising books. Uh, that I have uh, read this year. I really did like uh, the author's writing style. Uh, he he actually used 
his own advice uh, to use uh, the art of storytelling uh, in every part of the uh, book. Uh, although this is a non-fiction book, it never felt like a boring textbook. I uh, really identified and understood the examples uh, given by the author because uh, he was probably only uh, five years older than me and he clearly had a uh, similar education uh, as I did and most probably uh, he loved books. So it was a case of identification with the author as well as strongly supporting the general theme of the book which emphasizes uh, the importance and the strength of uh, storytelling its relation with the, uh, with the concept of success in every part of our lives. Uh, the best part uh, for me of course uh, was the chapters uh, in which he described how us story uh, that affects uh, the reader uh, can be uh, written or told. Although I never wanted to be an author, I found it uh, very useful uh, to understand why I like some stories and uh, do not like some others. I think, uh, this book would also help me to analyze the books. Uh, as a booktuber, I gave a uh, Bir Hikaye Anlatıcısının Yolculuğu by Nuri Sevsem Gürvardar, A Nine Hour of Ten. The first book that I finished is the book that we read for uh, my real life book club. We were actually going to read another uh, book, uh, so this book was not on my TBR. Uh, the Door uh, by uh, Magda Zabo. I read the English edition of this uh, Hungarian modern classic uh, literature. In this book, our narrator, uh, a writer uh, called actually Magda, uh, one day hires uh, a housemaid uh, called Emerence. And the book uh, actually tells the uh, relationship uh, between uh, this author and Emerence. As she spends more time with Emerence, uh, she learns more about her life and uh, also her very unique and strong uh, character. In paper, this book was not a book that I would like very much. And uh, when I read the synopsis of the book, uh, I actually did not have uh, very high expectations. And I thought that maybe I would have DNF this book. Uh, but on the contrary, I really uh, enjoyed reading uh, the book because uh, the writing was really, really well. Uh, and uh, I also uh, found uh, the uh, character of Emerence fascinating because she was very different uh, from the uh, woman that we see in that position. She was a working woman. She took her job very seriously and uh, she actually uh, did not uh, just uh, take care of uh, the house uh, but also took care of the mistress of the house, Magda. But she was not kind. Uh, she was actually a bit ruthless at times. Uh, that's what made the relationship between these two characters so fascinating. And there was literally a door uh, in the story which was uh, sort of like a mystery. But of course the door ha also had a symbolic meaning. So in summary, uh, I'm very glad uh, that this book was chosen uh, for my book club because otherwise I, I, would, I would certainly have not read this book. I really liked uh, The Door by Magda Zabo and I gave it an 8 out of 10. So those were my uh, most uh, surprising books of uh, 2022. Uh, please comment down below. Have you read any of the books that I mentioned in this video? And uh, were you as surprised by them as I was? And if you're a new viewer, first of all, welcome. Uh, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you very soon. Bye. As for Turkish word of the day, I'm going to choose hat. Hat means Şapka in Turkish and Şapka is our Turkish word of the day. Have a good day.